Welcome back to Global Lens. India is gearing up to host the AI Impact Summit 2026 in New Delhi, making it the first ever global AI summit to be hosted in the Global South. More than 100 global CEOs, around 15 heads of state are expected to participate in the summit. This theme uh, for the year is democratizing AI, bridging the AI divide. As a strategic precursor to the summit, around 300 pre-summit events have been organized to bring in diverse perspectives and build momentum ahead of the main event. Of these, 57 pre-summits have already been held across more than 25 countries. Earlier today, I spoke with Abhishek Singh, CEO of the India AI Mission and additional secretary at the Ministry of Electronics and IT to understand more about the summit and if India will unveil sovereign AI models at the summit. Listen in. See, like this is the first summit that's happening outside the developed world, outside the global north, in a global south country, in a developing country. And India positions itself as one of the top AI service providers in the sense that in the most recent Stanford AI Index, India has been ranked number three behind US and China. So while the delta is high, but we are seen as a country with a lot of potential when it runs to, when it comes to building AI production, AI solutions for sourcing AI manpower, AI personnel. So what we want to present to the world is the capability that India has as a country, our digital workforce, our tech workforce, the AI applications that are being developed, the implementation of AI, the how we are looking at governing AI, how we are ensuring responsible AI adoption, how we are ensuring diffusion of AI to the masses. So it benefits people in all sectors, whether they are farmers, whether they are in villages, mm -hmm. accessing healthcare or looking at educational services. So we want to present the Indian way of adopting AI, diffusing AI for the benefit of mankind to the whole world. Right. Uh, will India also introduce some sovereign AI models during the summit to the world? So India has been working on ensuring that we have a capability in building sovereign LLMs, uh, sovereign uh, SLMs. So we have been supporting an India AI mission, 12 such projects, uh, out of which Sarvam and Bharat Jain are very near to launching their models. So I do believe that uh, around the summit or before the summit, uh, Sarvam, Bharat Jain, Show the Gyani, Gan will be launching some of the models that they have developed. Right. And what are some of the solutions that they will target? The solution that they're targeting is like uh, enabling, say, for example, voice enabled services for farmers, agri advisory services for farmers. Because very often, the difference between a progressive farmer and a normal farmer whose e yield and productivity is much lower is because they don't have access to the right agricultural advice from the agricultural experts or access to the best quality seeds or putting the right inputs of fertilizers or kind to find out the best uh, best kind of crop mix that they should have. So voice enabled services in mother tongue is one service that we are building. Uh, our startups are building for benefit of farmers already live in several states and it's going to be scaled up. And then AI services in healthcare is an important thrust area for us like AI application for diagnosing disease like uh, tuberculosis, diabetic retinopathy, Cataract, these solutions have been developed, ICMR has tested it, and now we are in the process of scaling it and deploying across the country. And there are AI applications for climate change which can help predict floods better so that warning signals are sent to people in time. And then AI applications for education sectors, AI tutors which can help students learn the concepts in their own mother tongue. So there are multiple AI applications across sectors that are in the process of being scaled up and deployed hmm. that will be available for the whole world to see and adopt. Right. Will India push for a governance framework, a global governance framework on AI at the summit? See, the need and the requirement for AI gover global governance framework has been discussed at almost every major AI congregation that has happened in the past whether it is the forum of the global partnership on artificial intelligence or whether at the G20 or the G7 at every forum or at the UN level the UN high level advisory body on AI they also came up with their recommendations so the need is felt the requirements are well uh, well written there are some difference in approaches the way EU looks at it the US looks at it so between the two approaches India has a unique way of looking at our own governance guidelines with the, the report that we came out with we came out recently which private practice innovation over restraint so this approach also will be part of the deliberations at the summit and hopefully we'll be able to come to a consensus for adopting a India based uh, India's approach to the governance of artificial intelligence. so it will be priority to have some sort of consensus on a on, on a global framework of governance. As we speak, the discussions, deliberations through various working groups are going on and we have been like discussing with the partner countries and uh, I think these discussions, these deliberations will continue till the 
very eve of the summit and we are very hopeful of coming out through a framework which can be universally accepted. What will be the crux of that, sir? What will be the basis of that governance framework? See, the basis is with regard to like how much do you allow for innovation and how much restrictions you pose. So there was a time when Bletchley Park Summit was held wherein safety and security were seen as to be one of the top most concerns for the whole world. And it was felt that AI, if allowed to be developed unrestricted, can result in harms which the world needs to avoid. Over the last two years, since Bletchley Park Summit, over Korea, over Action Summit, and subsequently, the world has come to agree that while there are risks, but there are not risks which cannot be handled mm -hmm. by having systems. And the world has moved on from only having only safety and security as a concern to also looking at the positive uses of this technology on promoting innovation. The U.S. has come out with a very pro-innovation approach in their action plan, which was published in July last year. India's approach has always been that, that we drive innovation, we drive adoption of AI, we try ensure that people benefit from this technology, and we restrict the harms. So I think over a period of time, the world has come out to a situation where the technology is also getting mature, where we do feel that we have tools which will ensure that we can balance innovation and, and restrict. So that's where we are uh, concluding on. All right. Uh, when it comes to India's own regulatory structure on artificial intelligence, uh, where are we? Recently, guidelines were issued. The, uh, the Office of the Principal Scientific Advisor, they've also issued a white paper to seek suggestions. Will India come out with its own rules and legal system on artificial in intelligence like the EU has done this year, the US has done, and China have done? See, US, uh, US doesn't have an AI law. No, US has come out with the AI action plan. Only geography which has a distinct AI law currently is the major country, is the major group of country, the European Union. So we do believe, we published the AI governance guidelines, which kind of lays down the framework for development of artificial intelligence in India, mm. which primarily centers on prioritizing innovation over restraint, while looking into the aspects of accountability, trust, transparency, explainability, and understandability to ensure that we are able to limit harms of AI. So that's where we are. We are not proposing at the moment to have a AI legislation at the current level of risks. Mm -hmm. But as AI adoption goes uh, goes ahead, as AI moves on from generative AI to you know, agentic AI and onwards to physical AI, and if we start living in a in an era wherein robots and uh, autonomous vehicles and all coexist with humans and uh, regular cars, then maybe that scenario will require adapting some laws to meet the new requirements. Mm -hmm. So in short, we don't, uh, we are not proposing a new law at the moment, but in future, we do not foreclose the requirement of having a specific AI legislation which will handle the risks that may arise in future. Right. You already have a 10,000 plus uh, crore uh, AI mission plan. Will there be any further investments announced at the summit or in the run-up to it, uh, or even in the budget for that matter, to somehow encourage the ecosystem in India and also encourage FTI into India's AI ecosystem? See, already we are seeing a lot of investments that are coming in from all sources into the India's AI ecosystem. If you look at like AI uh, primarily works, the entire, comp entire AI stack operates at five levels. Energy level, the infrastructure level, the data center level, the models layer, the data layer and the applications layer. So India is investing a lot through the AI mission over the compute layer and the data center layer, the models and the applications. What we are seeing is a lot of investment which is coming from tech companies in leveraging the capability that India has in providing world-class infrastructure for building for building AI applications. Mm -hmm. Like for example, Google recently announced a $15 billion investment in data centers. Microsoft announced $17.5 billion, Amazon has announced $35 billion, and we are hoping that at the summit, around the summit, other big majors, whether it's NVIDIA, whether OpenAI, they will also looking at making their investments in India, which will, draw, which will drive adoption of AI. Because ultimately, the way AI is evolving, and the way AI has to generate return on investments, it will happen only when people start using AI at a population scale. And to that extent, India has a big advantage for doing that. So we are hoping, uh, currently we have sufficient money within the budget for AI mission. So we don't need more money from the government. What we are driving 
is the private sector investment into building AI applications, into building AI models, in augmenting the AI infrastructure so that we can move forward. Right. And I do believe some announcements coming from FDIs and other funds. Okay. Uh, so, could you give us a ballpark figure as to uh, what could be the quantum of investments coming in in the next few months or at the AI summit or how many companies have shown interest? A lot of companies have shown interest. I am not into speculation that I will do whether it will be 5 billion or 10 billion or 100 billion, but I would believe that the range has been seen between what Google did, what Microsoft did, and what uh, uh, Amazon did. So between the two, three of them, they have done almost $70 billion. And I believe that what we will see in the next few months will be significantly higher than what we have seen in the last six months. Right. Uh, when it comes to the victory that you would like to see personally at the India AI Summit, uh, what would that be, sir? It would be like uh, scaling up of AI applications, taking uh, away from, as Honorable Prime Minister also said the day before, when he interacted with the companies which are building foundation models, he said that we have to move on from AI toys to real AI use cases. Mm -hmm. So AI use cases, application which helps in improving efficiency, productivity of people in all sectors, whether in agriculture or whether in healthcare or education or MSME or manufacturing, or retail, if all these sectors become more efficient and they result in increasing incomes of people in all these sectors, ultimately it will contribute to national income and it will be the key for us to move from a $4 trillion economy to a $30 trillion economy, which we can proudly call it as a Vixit Bharat. Are you looking to offer some solutions to the Global South from the India stack? See, like the Global South is looking up to India because with our DPI story, the DPI playbook, the digital public infrastructure, wherein at G20 we offered all our DPI solutions to the Global South for adoption, for replication, for uh, making changes to suit their own requirements. Similarly, at the AI summit, we are we will be proposing to create an AI commons in which use cases of AI in various sectors whether healthcare, whether agriculture, education, manufacturing, supply chain, will be offered as a AI commons, which can be used by any country for adopting in their own geographies. Right. My final two questions, sir. Uh, India has issued draft rules on AI labeling. Uh, by when do you think <coughs> this will become a law and mandatory? See, the guidelines have been issued and it's up for public consultations, which require, which kind of lays down the framework that we can address the risks which are coming on uh, with the AI generated content, whether images, the video, the audio notes. So the intent is to let the people know that if something is AI generated, the information should be given. In what form it should be given, that's up to, uh, that's currently being discussed. I think that last date for giving comments have been extended. So once we get all the feedback from industry, from the key stakeholders, we will be framing the final laws. And that's a wrap on another edition of Global Lens. Goodbye and many thanks for watching.